we lift our brother Kelly to you, Lord. We pray for, for his health. We pray for his mind. We pray for his heart. We want him here with us. We want him to be part of our church, our brother. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> I, I, uh, I put, I, this is uh, Maranatha, March 9, a fuller knowledge of God. This is, this, uh oh, this is, uh, okay. All right. This is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom You have sent. Uh, John 17, 3. Maranatha, page 76. Only by knowing God can we prepare to meet Him at His coming. Uh, please, the floor is open if, if you want to share something. Please do. Only by knowing God here can we prepare to meet Him at His coming. But many of those who profess to believe in Christ do not know God. They have only a surface religion. They do not love God. They do not study His character. Therefore, they do not know how to trust, how to look and live. They do not know what restful love is or what it means to walk by faith. They fail of understanding that it is their duty to receive in order that they may enrich others. Receive what? Holy Spirit. Receive what? Holy Spirit. Blessing. The Holy Spirit. What's that? Blessing. Blessing. Another. Okay, it's okay. The world, <coughs> the world by wisdom knows not God. Many, <coughs> somebody else might have to do this. Many have talked, help me here, eloquently. eloquently. What is that? Very uh, high, high class. Big words. Big words? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. You're never going to hear big words from me. Okay? Wes told me once, Pop, if you can't spell it, don't say it. <laughs> Why? That's, That's how it should be. Is that how it should be? Keep it, they say it, keep it simple. Say, Amen, brother. Keep it simple, stupid. But their, <laughs> but their reasoning brings men no nearer to him. Because they themselves are not in vital connection with Him. Professing themselves to be wise, what? They what? become fools. They become fools. Their knowledge of God is imperfect. We cannot by searching find out God, but He has revealed Himself in His Son, who is the brightness of the Father's glory and the express image of His person. If we desire a knowledge of God, we must what? Be Christ-like. Be Christ-like. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Living a pure life through faith in Christ as a personal Savior will bring to the believer a, a clear, higher conception of God. Christ is a perfect revelation of God. No man, no man has seen God at any time. He says, the only begotten Son, which is in the, in the, of the Father, He has declared Him. Only, only by knowing Christ can we know God. And as we behold Him, what? What does that mean as we behold Him? What is that? As we look at Him. As we look at Him? Amen? As we look at Him, 
we shall be changed into his image, prepared to meet him at his coming. Now is the time to prepare for the coming of our Lord. Amen. Readiness to meet him cannot be attained in a moment's time. Preparatory to that solemn scene, there must be what? Vigilant. Vigilant, waiting, and watching. Combined with earnest work. So God's children, so God's children glorify Him. Amid the, the busy scenes of life, their voices will be heard speaking words of encouragement, hope, and faith. All they have and are is consecrated to the Master's service. Thus they prepare to meet the Lord. And when He comes, they shall say with joy, This is our God. We have waited for Him. And He will save us. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's prepare to meet Jesus. Oh, that's my boy working. I'm sorry. <laughs> Still have it. God bless you. Yeah, that's my boy working on the chopper. Let's have prayer, and then what's next? The lesson. Right? The lesson. Let's have prayer. Father, forgive our sins. Lord. Have mercy. And Father, we want to we want to know you more. We want to be ready for your coming. We want the world to look at us and see Jesus. Father, we need you in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Can someone read that to us?
being fed Pat all the time. Yeah, it's Pat. What did Paul say about that? When he grew up, he gave away the childish types of things. Mm -hmm. So he was <coughs> into the real meat. And I don't, I mean, I don't know about using that as, a, as a, something in the diet. I thought about the meat of the, of the gospel. So uh, we talk about it in this very early part in uh, the Sabbath and Sunday that uh, we talk about the gospel. And the gospel is the second, right? Second gospel that uh, was preached in the Old Testament, right. same gospel that uh, is preached in, uh, in Revelation. I like the way Doug put that. Yes. From Eden to the cross, they looked forward to the cross, not looking forward to the cross, but looking forward to what that would symbolize. And we now look from the cross to Christ's second coming. We don't worship the cross, but we go to it with Christ. We're there. Because we know Amen. that's where he paid the price for us. I just wanted to um, say a word about the uh, prophecy. Prophecy has um, another way of looking at it. We look forward because of what God has, has planned for us. But we can also look back at the prophecies that have been fulfilled. And this, um, looking back, gives us more, um, more trust, more faith to look at what has been fulfilled. And then we, we realize that God is so trustworthy and so, so, full of, um, so full of good that he would give us these words for today. So we are just very, very blessed to have prophecy. And when it talks about the, the way that it's going to be, that we choose two different ways, and that's going on right now. We choose the way to go into the apostate churches, or we choose the way to go into what God has put there for us. And another thing I was thinking about is it says that the people who choose the other way, they're going to have no rest. And I'm thinking, you know, there's so many people today that are really tired. They have no rest. They just work and work and work and work. And I feel for them. They have no rest. So I think it's really wonderful that we have this truth that we can follow. And we, um, it's, it's God not only created us, but he recreates us. On the Sabbath, he gives us a new feeling, a new blessing. So we're just so doubly blessed. <coughs> Often I think of um, how uh, language ends up being uh, kind of a symbol of, of uh, life and a lot of things that we take for granted as being uh, uh, something that just happened because of the change of the seasons or whatever, is actually on the Bible. What do they say about March? We just came into it. If it comes in like a lion, it goes out like a lamb. That's what they said. Or if it comes in like a lamb, it goes out like a lion. Now, we saw that in our in our Sabbath school lesson here, that Jesus came in through the time of the crucifixion, came in as a lamb. lamb. Came in as a lamb. And what does it say in here that's going to happen? He is going to come back as a lion. When he comes back in the clouds of glory, and when he comes back at the end of time, he will be the lion. The lion of Judah. So if we think about that, we have to understand that a lot of things that we pick up have been picked up out of, uh, out of the Bible. And, uh, and we relate them back. And I would have to say to you, um, we've been uh, following the weather up north, weather in Michigan, 
and it really came in like a lion. Uh, there were days when uh, the temperature didn't get above, they, they were telling us about above four degrees all day long, state of four. Uh, and yet, our son-in-law said he had to be out working. He had to be there working. And, uh, and so the, the days were just uh, uh, a real trial. But we understand that through God's mercy, uh, the Lamb is actually the one that took over at the cross. He took over at the cross. And then that means that when he comes back, there will be judgment. Now, the judgment, uh, uh, the Millerites, you know, they studied this and uh, uh, they called this period when um, they were studying uh, back in the uh, 1800s as the uh, period uh, of Adventists. Adventists. Uh, and these were not <coughs> the denomination we belong to. They came on later. They came on a little later. Yeah, yeah, in, in the 1860s. And but these other Adventists were belief. They, their belief was in the uh, advent of uh, the Bible teaching uh, for the second coming, but they had not received the entire light at the time. And with the additional study. They found out that uh, they really needed to also be uh, seventh day. Why the seventh day? Why the seventh day? Participation. Why the seventh day? We're going to follow God. We're going to follow, follow God. His commandments, and in His commandments, and it's the one that says remember. Yeah. And where did where did that start? Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. It did creation. He did this at the creation. So what do we celebrate is when we celebrate the Sabbath? Creation. It's creation, of course. And I think it's so important to remember our benchmarks of what God has done for us and make sure that uh, we stay in tune with that. I, uh, again, uh, go ahead, Ron. I was going to say that uh, I think it's really interesting that the Jews had it right about the Sabbath day, but they had it wrong about Jesus coming. Yes. They wanted him to come as the king. Well, that's where they had it wrong. And then the other churches, they recognized Jesus, but they have it wrong on the Sabbath day. So it's kind of interesting how this works. And, and we are so fortunate, so very, very blessed to both know Jesus and to recognize the Creator. And I just think it's a marvelous thing that we have had this, this information and this blessing that came out of 18, I guess it was 1860 really, when the Adventist Church started. And I just, I praise God for that. And now we have the messages that we need to be proclaiming to the rest of the world so they too can participate. We don't, God doesn't want anybody to be left out. He loves us all. I can hardly believe that he loves some of those people there. I saw them going by in cars and doing bad things out of their windows the other day. And I thought, God loves them. And, and that's the truth. He loves them all. And we're to proclaim even to those people who are unready <laughs> to give them the word. And, and that's a, a very significant thing because God is love. He loves us all. And that's his foundation of his government. His mm -hmm. It says that the angel came out proclaiming the, the gospel. And, and that, that means that that message is for us. We are to proclaim the gospel. Uh, another thing that, that uh, the wife was, was saying was that the Sabbath 
at first I thought it was, you know, to just as a day that I had to be here. Um, it took a few years before I, I learned that that it's one of the greatest days, you know. Um, sure. And, 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 you know, that God gave us, and it showed us that He loves us so much that He gives us this day to rest and to and to to reflect on His character. That a lot of people don't know His character. A lot of people just see Him as a. a an angry God, you know, a vengeful God, who if we don't obey him, you know, he's going to destroy us like, like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed them, and, and, you know, but, he, but God's love for us, it, it, he, you know, this happened because he loves us so much. So much that he gave us his only son. He got the son. It's kind of what the lesson here says. It says, the fear of God does not mean, and this is on Monday, mid page, does not mean to be afraid of him. His presence in our lives, God and end time people are the ones who fear God. God desires his people to love him, obey him and reflect his character found in each of those texts. Exactly what we what what you're saying there, the commission is to fear God and love him, obey him. And I think that if we can do that, we will reflect his we become as a reflection of the Holy Spirit. Now Ellen G. White and I think we've talked about this in the last few weeks. Ellen G. White says the Holy Spirit is a person just the same as, as Jesus is. We can grieve the Holy Spirit, and that's the deadly sin. And that's what Solomon and Gamar did. They grieved the Holy Spirit. Pushed him away to the point that he could never go back. So then there's no recourse at that point. And that recourse, of course, meant that even with the vigilance of Abraham, if there are 50 souls in the city, will you save the city? God said, well, sure. 45. He went right down, you know, lower and lower, down to 10. And there weren't even 10. And he had to take Lot by the hand to, and lead him out of the city here, he would have been destroyed. <coughs> so I think it, uh, and who was destroyed even then? His wife. Because she had to look back. She couldn't leave it. And I think so often uh, we catch ourselves thinking about looking back. We don't want to look back. Because uh, there's no future in, uh, in going backwards in this situation. We, We've got to be right there, reflecting the Holy Spirit's and, 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 and God's uh, character to others, so that we can. Uh, go ahead, Marilyn. Um, I was looking at where it says, "Fear God, and give glory to Him." I think that's a wonderful thing, and I, I think of the fear that they want us to have is respect and reverence, and I, I think sometimes when this is presented to children as fear, they become frightened. And I, I really get upset about that because I don't want them to be afraid of God. I want them to respect God and to give reverence to God. And we as adults understand what that means, that we, we realize how, how wonderful He is and how all-encompassing everything is that He does. So I, I, I think about that, that it's a pretty big, broad thing. And then when he talks about <coughs> the messages, he's saying it was a loud voice. So when you hear that, that was special emphasis there. 
that we are really to continue with this effort and to not back up from it. We're to not to be ashamed or quiet about it. We're to speak boldly, let people know that this is what God is saying. Um, there was one other thing, but I can't think of it, so I'll stop. <laughs> we have uh, the uh, words here uh, from Ellen G. White. She took this out of, out of uh, some of the holy scriptures. But let's read 100, uh, Psalm 111 9. If someone would read that for us. Psalm 111 9. Somebody have that? He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. So he said redemption, and it goes on to say, uh, angels, when they speak his name, they on their face, let's say, with their reverence, then we should also fall sinful people as we are. So if the angels uh, will bow their heads, they cover their feet. They have, these angels have six wings, two that cover their feet, two that cover their face, just when they say his name, and two that they fly. And they say holy, holy, and they, holy. All the time. And these are angelic beings, yes. perfect creatures, and they Still. They still reference him in that respect. Where was the, that part that you continued? It was 100, uh, actually, uh, it's a prophet in the Kings. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Right there. Thank and so what happens is uh, um, she goes on to explain well, uh, this, uh, the psalmist's words here is what she's doing. Yes. So she it makes it a little larger in terms of what she saw in heaven. How these angels were um, so in um, um, reference to the, the holy uh, name of God and to Jesus. See, in Ellen G. White, she also talks about the fact that the people that uh, uh, represent uh, one another, the Holy Spirit is really in, in impressing upon all of us and in, in all of the worlds to reverence Jesus. She is, because he will end up, at, as we see this unfold, as the King of Kings. And Lord's Lords. He, he will be, God is going to uh, turn the universe over to him. Uh, reflecting back to Psalm 111 9, in my Bible it says, The holiness of God in his name. We are never, <coughs> and this is from Ellen White, uh, she says, We are never in any manner to treat lightly the titles or appellations of the deity. In prayer, we enter the audience chamber of the Most High, and we should come before Him with holy awe. I like that word, holy awe, better than fear. Mm -hmm. Come before Him in holy awe, because He is God. And in the prayer, we enter the audience of Him. And the angels veil their faces, as was said, and the cherubim and the bright holy seraphim approach His throne with solemn reverence. How much more should we finite, sinful beings come in a reverent manner before the Lord. Yeah. <coughs> we really need to remember that. Yes, Sue? I was going to say that makes perfect sense that, I mean, we are hopefully in awe of God and, you know, we 
fear him and respect him. But the angels, uh, as John was reading, are so much more so because they're closer to God. They're with God and they see even more clearly than we do. So it's nice that they can reflect it even more so. That's right. And you know, how can we show God that we love him? He's shown us in so many ways that he loves us. But how do we reflect that back to him? Mm -hmm. The only ways we can do that is worship and obedience. obedience. And I, I'm glad for that. So we uh, take a look at Exodus 20. <coughs> And uh, I think you, many of you know this by memory. But Exodus 20, starting with verse 2, and going through those first four commandments, it talks about the reverence we're supposed to have for this great being. And the, uh, and the fact that we should have no other gods before us. Uh, I think it, the devil has been so uh, seducing with all of us, that he uh, changes what today many of us hold as gods. Uh, I always get a chuckle out of uh, Dave Ramsey talking about the people going down the road, you know, and said, I'm a BMW, I'm a BMW. Well, their car is their god. Their car is their god. Or, uh, you know, just the, the idea that they put these things up on a pedestal. And they actually, I think, get up and get in the place, get, get between them and God. They can never see God because they're looking at their, at their idol. I think that so often we uh, need to make sure that we should check ourselves. Because uh, the Bible also talks about money as becoming a God. Because many people will, will hold their money up. And of course, what is the Bible? What is the, the uh, uh, Spirit of prophecy and the Bible tell us about the end times in terms of money. Throw it to the wind. Mm -hmm. It'd be worthless. It's almost there now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you were in Venezuela, what would you say right now? Yeah. Money's worthless. Because they tell the people, they tell our uh, workers, I tell them, some the MS workers in Venezuela. The moment you get your money, you spend it. Because the item that you'll buy could be inflated by 2,000% in a couple of days. So you think about this, you can see how, uh, what did they say we, in this country? How soon we'll run out of money? Uh, whether we have it or not, we're not going to be able to use it. True, but. Uh, <laughs> But that's, that's absolutely true. We'll talk about that in a minute. But September, we're going to supposedly run out of money again. They just raised the debt. So if that be the case, it means that we're spending money at a record pace right now. And so what is happening is we are seeing this fulfillment take place right in our own eyes. And all we have to do is just watch it. And it will come to, become clear to us that the Lord and the prophets have led us right in the right direction because they can tell us what's happening. It's happening right now. So if we take a look at uh, the second angel's message on Tuesday and, and uh, on Wednesday, uh, we, uh, or excuse me, that's the first angel's message. Then the uh, uh, first angel's message I heard on uh, uh, Tuesday talks about uh, uh, the commandments that we were just visiting. <coughs> and it also talks about uh, how we are supposed to uh, observe the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? It's commemorating creation. creation. And it's also uh, observance in terms of uh, recognizing Jesus as the Creator. So you put those two together, that becomes worship. 
that what does God uh, value so very, very much with us? Obedience. Obedience of their worship. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think that if we can do that, um, it, it'll uh, make our life far more clear. Uh, I don't know how many of you feel uh, at times that you, uh, you fall down. I, I saw a sign down the street here in Maryland called it out to my attention. It's called a setback. Well, we get set back, don't we? Where uh, something comes along and kind of pushes us back and we don't live up to even our own standard, which is pretty poor. Uh, but we don't, and we have to question ourselves and search our souls, souls and ask for uh, forgiveness, one, and two, ask for sustenance so that we can be sustained in the future. So that uh, God can uh, help us. Can I read the last paragraph yeah. on Tuesday? It says, while the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be avowed of, of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. The keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is evidence of loyalty to the Creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receives the mark of the beast, the other, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receives the seal of God. And I just think that's wonderful that we will have the seal of God in Ezekiel, and I don't remember where it is, but in Ezekiel it tells us that we will have that seal of God, so we know that we'll be protected even if, even if we have to go to the ultimate sacrifice, which it would be our death. We know that we are protected and we are sealed. And that's, that's a good blessing. And we, we, we are also sealed. Yes. Sure. Yes. Um, that's what I was saying. Exactly. It's on our, our Four hours. Having yeah. God in our minds right. and in our works. Our highest seal. So they're very similar. Mm -hmm. One is to seal to be sealed to God, and the other one is to be sealed to, to the earthly, you know, the Babylon. It's the counterfeit. That has fallen. These are earthly powers. Let's take a look at um, the text that talks about uh, the um, uh, how we follow as mankind. Many of us uh, uh, do not follow what we should. But it's uh, Colossians 2, 8, 9. Did someone read that for us? Colossians 2, 8, 9. <coughs> For he that wrought effectively and Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and that they unto the circumcision. Well, um, the text that I was reading was a little bit different than that. A little Colossians uh, 2. Oh, Colossians. I'm okay. reading Colossians. Uh, yeah. Okay. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy in vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. Okay, so we're talking about the beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy in empty deceit. According to traditions of men. What are the traditions of men? Following Sunday. Sunday laws. What other tradition did Rome give us? Pagan when, did, when does the day end? Pagan holidays. The day ends at 12 midnight. 12 midnight. But it doesn't in the Bible, does it? Okay. Where does the day end? Sunset. Sunset. So we were given these false uh, benchmarks like the day's end and and uh, and, and uh, keeping Sunday, and 
How many of you historically uh, remember exactly how Sunday came about? Go ahead, uh, Carlos. Sunday, Sunday, what? Sunday worship? Yeah. Uh, what Constant, Constantine? Well, but before saw, that, before that. Well, he saw, he, he was going to prepare, prepare for a battle, uh -huh. and he saw a cross on uh -huh. the sky, mm -hmm. and, and it was, it was Exactly. Sunday. But before that, what happened? They, they were celebrating Christ's resurrection. I'm talking about the, the Christians on Sunday. They made it a festival day. Constantine took a look around and said, well, that's unnatural. The sun worshipers keep something. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, we can get the, we can get the uh, sun worshipers to come in with us and join with us, and we'll, we'll put the uh, <coughs> pagans together with the Christians, and we'll have one church. And we'll do it on Sunday. Uh, I'm reflecting back to Colossians 2. Um, and Amy yeah. says uh, just what was read. But Ellen White says, we can receive the, of heaven's light only as we are willing to be emptied of self. We cannot discern the character of God or accept Christ by faith unless we consent to the bringing into captivity of every thought to the obedience of Christ. To all who do this, the Holy Spirit is given without measure. Again, another blessing. If we do this, the Holy Spirit is given to us without measure. Amen. How many of us are able to empty ourselves? That's pretty hard. For me, I, I find it to be most troubling. I mean, I, I think it, uh, uh, if I look at myself, I, I, at times I feel like I should give up. I think it, that's true for a lot of us. And so what we have to do is we have to pray. Pray diligently. Pray fast. And fast. Because I think really what happens is we can only get there through the help of the Holy Spirit. It, 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 to me, it becomes like a circle. If I could empty myself, then I could be over here and I could be filled with the Holy Spirit. But if I don't empty myself, I can't do it. So it, it becomes something that has to happen. Each one of us have to get to a point where uh, self becomes in it. I had said to my older brother, he was a veterinarian, and I said to him, Charlie, uh, the big problem we have is pride. And you know, what do we have to be proud of? Not much, really. Not in God's sphere. We don't have much to be proud of. You know, uh, uh, just because the earth might recognize us, you know, through monetary gain or other things, that doesn't mean much. It's not God's will. It means nothing. So I think it, so often we need to uh, go back to our knees, or go down to our knees, and uh, make sure that uh, uh, we uh, allow God to direct us and uh, take over our lives. And uh, we end up with um, the last uh, part of this, the second uh, uh, angel's message and the uh, third angel's message, we uh, understand that we're talking about Babylon has fallen. It has fallen. It is set twice, right? right. Babylon has fallen. It's fallen. And there's some special connotation to that. It's fallen the first time is the Roman Catholic Church, and the second time is the church's daughters, the apostate churches. So it's said two times. Who are the apostate churches? Those who don't communicate. Uh, Sunday 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 right. And have you ever read those uh, uh, excerpts out of, uh, or had uh, one of the preachers on TV, uh, like uh, Dwight Nelson or one of them, uh, talk to you about, the, or say to you, uh, uh, these are the writings of some of the bishops and uh, cardinals? 
if you really are a Protestant, you would be keeping Sabbath. That's what they tell They go so far in there to say, if you were really true Protestants, you would not be following our thing of going to Sunday. You would be going to the true Sabbath on exactly. Saturday, like the Seventh-day Advent. That's what they do. They come right out and say it. And this uh, is a lot of that, that, And a lot of that has to do, a big part of it is money. Oh, absolutely. All I have to do now, it, it, because exactly. they know that the Saturday, you know, that's that's time and a half, you know. Um, and, that's and, 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 and then, but but if you work Sunday, <coughs> or, you know, that's the start of the week. You don't get that that time and a half. So they they, you know, that's where you start the week. But. Getting back to uh, a little thing that you were saying before was that at the time there were <coughs> Christians and Jews, well mainly the Jewish people that were causing uh, rebellions and uprisings in, in, in Rome. And so that's another reason why uh, Constantine said, let me separate them. You know, and create this day. Exactly. When, when we um, talk about uh, uh, what we had learned a week or so ago, that Satan's power has been increased by tenfold over what it was at the, at the time of the crucifixion. Tenfold. To right now. So I think we really need to make sure we understand that in closing, I want to uh, just finish up here with the, uh, the last uh, paragraph on the Friday. It says, the conclusion and proclamation of God's final message will result in a great separation that divides people in the world into two camps. Those who love and obey God and those who follow the beast. The separation is uh, portrayed in terms of two harvests. And that is the grapes to be trampled in, in a white press and the wheat to be gathered in. Yes? I don't know if I can get this out very clearly, but I understand that God's people are in every church. Every church. These people are not, exactly. well, these people are not lost, and it almost sounds like we all are saying, oh, yeah, we're the only ones that are going to make it. No, no, no. And there will be a lot of Adventists that are going to fall away, yes, too. That's right. So I think that that's the reason why we have, we have to search our own souls. That's right. God has his people in every church. Yeah. yeah, he says I have uh, many uh, sheep in other folds. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So uh, I was hearing Doug Batchelor say something about that. He said that you know, <coughs> they truly believe in God and, and, and worship him and their, their heart belongs to him. You know, they might go to church on Sunday, but they're living up to what they, they had to do. Right, right. And, yes. and which is that they their love serious. for God and their respect and reverence for Him. Yes. Amen. Is, is it the, the church um, organization that might be the apostate rather than the people? And the people the itself, exactly. So I think it's the overarching <coughs> part of the um, churches rather than the individual people. So let's pray for them. Uh, is that correct, Carol? Is that your understanding? My understanding is that God's people are everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are not the only. But what are we have been falsely treated that in the past, and now that most of the half of them are out of the church because they said that's not right. So we've got to get those kids back in. Well, what, did, uh, what did uh, Jesus say that we're supposed to do with the wheat and the tares? Let them grow together, because at the end, he will pluck the wheat. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be surprised who all comes out of that harvest. <coughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got to pray like everything that we do. We're part of that group. And I want to see everyone here in this room, all of us, Amen. together. together. Amen. I love what uh, Craig uh, uh, Harris. Harris said up north. 
let's meet beside the second tree inside uh, Benjamin's gate on the second Sabbath. The first Sabbath we'll all be together, I think in the air, if I remember right. But, uh, and I heard someone say, that is to allow people that have never kept the Sabbath to have one Sabbath before they get to heaven. God bless you all. Right now, Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the time together. We thank you for each soul that's in this room. <coughs> bless the Lord and bless us that we uh, go forward from here and gain special knowledge that we come closer to you each day. Amen. Amen. Thank you.